Good morning, Year 3, and welcome to this video. This is a bit random. Usually we start a text from the beginning, but we are starting George's Mar Marvelous Medicine from Chapter 3. So I'm going to quickly read you Chapters 1 and 2 so that by the time it's time to start the reading activity, you'll be ready to start from Chapter 3. So let me just share my screen so that you can see it. And we are going to read it together. I'm going to make it bigger so that you can see. Okay. Oopsie days, what did I do? So this is called Chapter One and it's called Grandma. And you can just follow it along with me. I'm going shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on a Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get into mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get into. And don't forget to give grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock, the mother said. Then she went out, closing the back door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in her chair by the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, Now you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine. No, grandma, George said. And just try to behave yourself for once while she's away. Yes, grandma, George said. George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or sister. His father was a farmer and the farm they lived in was miles away from anywhere. So there were never any children to play with. He was tired of staring at pigs and hens and cows and sheep. He was especially tired of having to live in the same house as a grisly old grunion of a grandma. Looking after her all by himself was hardly the most exciting way to spend a Saturday morning. You can make me a nice cup of tea for start, grandma said to George. That'll keep you out of mischief for a few minutes. Yes, Grandma, George said. George couldn't help disliking Grandma. She was a selfish, grumpy old woman. She had pale brown teeth and a small puckered up mouth like a dog's bottom. How much sugar in your tea today, Grandma? George asked. One spoonful, she said, and no milk. Most grandmothers are lovely, kind, helpful old ladies, but not this one. She spent all day and every day sitting in her chair by the window, and she was always complaining, grousing, grouching, grumbling, griping about something or other. Never once, even on her best days, had she smiled at George and said, well, how are you doing this morning, George? Or why don't you and I have a game of snakes and ladders? Or how was school today? She didn't seem to care about other people, only about herself. She was a miserable old grouch. George went into the kitchen and made Grandma a cup of tea with a tea bag. He put one spoon of sugar in it and no milk. He stirred the sugar well and carried the cup into the living room. Grandma sipped the tea. It's not sweet enough, she said. Put more sugar in. George took the cup back to the kitchen and added another spoonful of sugar. He stirred it again and carried it carefully to, into Grandma. You can see George's grisly old grunion of a grandma sipping the tea. Where's the saucer, she said. I won't have a cup without a saucer. George fetched her a saucer. And what about a teaspoon, if you please? I've stirred it for you, Grandma. I stirred it well. I'll stir my own tea, thank you very much, she said. Fetch me a teaspoon. George fetched her a teaspoon. When George's mother or father was home, Grandma never ordered George about like this. It was only when she had him on her own that she began treating him badly. You know what's the matter with you, the old woman said, staring at George over the rim of the teacup with those bright, wicked little eyes. And bright little wicked eyes. George, Roald Dahl also described another character as having wicked eyes, the BFG, if you remember. You're growing too fast. Boys who grow fast, too fast, become stupid and lazy. But I can't help it if I'm growing fast, Grandma, George said. Of course you can, she snapped. Growing's a nasty childish habit. But we have to grow, Grandma. If we didn't grow, we'd never be grown-ups. Rubbish, boy. Rubbish, she said. Look at me. Am I growing? Certainly not. But you did once, Grandma. Only very little, the old woman answered. I gave up growing when I was extremely small, along with the other nasty childish habits like laziness and disobedience and greed and sloppiness and untidiness and stupidity. You haven't given up any of these things, have you? I'm still only a boy, little boy, Grandma. You're eight years old, she snorted. <laughs> That's old enough to know better. If you don't stop growing soon, it'll be too late. Too late for what, Grandma? It's ridiculous, she went on. You're nearly as tall as me already. George took a good look at Grandma. She certainly was a very tiny person. Her legs were so short that she had to have a footstool to put her feet on. Her head only came up halfway up the back of the armchair. Daddy says it's fine for a man to be tall, 
George said. Don't listen to your daddy, Grandma said. Listen to me. But how do I stop myself from growing? George asked her. Eat less chocolate, Grandma said. Does chocolate make you grow? It makes you grow in the wrong way, she snapped. Up instead of down. Grandmother sipped on some tea, but never took her eyes up from little the little boy who stood before her. Never grow up, she said. Always down. <sighs> yes, Grandma. And stop eating chocolate. Eat cabbage instead. Cabbage? Oh, no, I don't like cabbage, George said. It's not what you like or what you don't like, Grandma snapped. It's what's good for you that counts. From now on, you must eat cabbage three times a day. Mountains of cabbage. And if it's got caterpillars in it, <laughs> so much better. How disgusting, Grandma wants him to eat cabbage with caterpillars. She certainly sounds very evil. Ouch, George said. Caterpillars give you brains, the old woman said. Mummy washes them down the sink, George said. Mummy's as stupid as you are, Grandma said. Cabbage doesn't taste of anything without a few boiled caterpillars in it. Slugs too. Not slugs, George cried out. I couldn't eat slugs. Whenever I see a live slug on a piece of lettuce, Grandma said, I gobble it up quick before it crawls away. Delicious. <sniffs> she squeezed her lips together tight so that her mouth could become a tiny wrinkled hole. Delicious, she said again. <sniffs> Worms and slugs and beetly bugs. You don't know what's good for you. You're joking, Grandma. I never joke, she said. Beetles are perhaps the best of all. They go <sniffs> crunch. Grandma, that's beastly. The old hag grinned, showing those pale brown teeth. Sometimes, if you're lucky, she said, you get a beetle inside the stem of a celery stick. That's what I like. Grandma, how could you? You find all sorts of nice things in sticks of raw celery, the old woman went on. Sometimes it's earwigs. I don't want to hear about it, cried George. A big fat earwig is very tasty, Grandma said, licking her lips. But you've got to be very quick, my dear. When you put one of those things in your mouth, it has a pair of sharp nippers on its back. And if it grabs your tongue with those, it never lets go. So you've got to bite the earwig first. <coughs> chop, chop, before it bites you. George started edging towards the door. He wanted to get away as far as possible from this filthy old woman. You're trying to get away from me, aren't you? She said, pointing a finger straight at George's face. Little George stood by the door, staring at the old hag in the chair. She stared back at him. Could it be, George wondered, that she was a witch? Had he always thought witches were only in fairy tales? But now he was not so sure. Come closer to me, little boy, she said, beckoning him with a horny finger. Come closer to me and I will tell you secrets. George didn't move. Grandmother didn't move either. I know a great many secrets, she said. Suddenly, she smiled. It was a thin, icy smile. The kind a snake might make just before it bites you. Come over here to Grandma and she'll whisper secrets to you. George took a step backward, edging closer to the door. You mustn't be frightened of your old Grandma, she said, smiling that icy smile. George took another step backward. Some of us, she said, and all at once she was leaning forward in her chair and whispering in a throaty sort of voice George had never heard her use before. Some of us, she said have magic powers that can twist the creatures of this earth into wondrous shapes. A tingle of electricity flashed down the length of George's spine. He began to feel frightened. Some of us, the old woman went on, have fire on our tongues and sparks in our bellies and wizardry in the tips of our fingers. <laughs> Gosh, George. Some of us know secrets that would make your hair stand straight up on end and your eyes pop out of their sockets. George wanted to run away, but his feet seemed stuck to the floor. We know how to make your nails drop off and teeth grow out of your fingers instead. George began to tremble. It was on her face that frightened him the most. The frosty smile, the brilliant unblinking eyes. We know to have you wake up in the morning with a long tail coming out from behind you. Grandma, he cried, stop! We know secrets, my dear, about dark places where dark things live and squirm and slither all over each other. George made a dive for the door. It doesn't matter how far you run, he heard her saying, you won't get, eh, sorry, you won't ever get away. George ran into the kitchen, slamming the door behind him. You can see there he is.
to the marvelous plan. So this is the last chapter I'm going to read and then you can go on to your um, reading video. George sat himself down at the table in the kitchen. He was shaking a little. Oh, how he hated grandmother. He really hated that horrid old witchy woman. And all of a sudden he had a tremendous urge to do something about her, something whopping, something absolutely terrific, a real shocker, a sort of explosion. He wanted to blow away that witchy smell that hung about her in the next room. He may have only been eight years old, but he was a brave little boy. He was ready to take this old woman on. I'm not going to be frightened by her, he said softly to himself. But he was frightened, and that's why he wanted to suddenly explode her away. Well, not quite away, but he did want to shake the old woman up a bit. Very well, then. What should it be, this whopping, terrific, exploding shock of her grandma? He would have liked to put a firecracker under her chair, but he didn't have one. He would have liked to put a long green snake down the back of her dress, but he didn't have a long green snake. He would have liked to put six big black rats in the room with her and not the door, but he didn't have six big black rats. As George sat there pondering this interesting problem, his eye fell on the bottle of Grandma's brown. Medicine standing at the sideboard. I'm just going to show you the picture so you can see all the different plants he's thinking of. Explosion, firecracker under the chair, a snake down her back, six big black rats. But he didn't have any of that equipment. So we've seen the medicine. Rotten stuff it seemed to be. Four times a day, a large spoonful of it was shoveled into her mouth, but it didn't do her the slightest bit of good. She was always just as horrid after she had been, after she's had it as she'd been before. The whole point of medicine surely was to make the person better. If it didn't do that, then it was quite useless. So ho, thought George suddenly. Aha, ho hum. I know exactly what I'll do. I shall make her a new medicine. One that is so strong and so fierce and so fantastic it will either cure her completely or blow off the top of her head. I'll make her a magic medicine, a medicine no doctor in the world has ever made before. George looked at the kitchen clock. It said five past ten. It was nearly half an hour before Grandma's next dose was due at eleven. Here we go then, cried George, jumping on the table. A magic medicine it shall be. So give me a bug and a jumping flea, give me two snails and lizard three, and a slimy squiggler from the sea, and a poisonous thing of a bumblebee, and the juice from the fruit of a jubee tree, and the powdered bone from a wombat's knee, and one hundred other things as well, each with a rather nasty smell. I'll stir them up, I'll boil them long, a mixture's tough, a mixture strong, and then hi-ho, and down it goes. A nice big spoonful, hold your nose. Just gulp it down and have no fear. How do you like it, Granny dear? Will she go pop? Will she explode? Will she go flying down the road? Will she go puff in a puff of smoke? Start fizzing like a can of Coke. Who knows? Not I. Let's wait and see. I'm glad it's neither you or me. Oh, Grandmother, if only you knew what I have got in store for you. So George has a marvellous plan to blow his grandmother away with this medicine. Okay. And that is it for today. The next chapter I'm going to read in the reading video. So why don't you head on over to the reading video, watch it as we go through our vocabulary words and we can read the next chapter and you can do your independent task. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.